What up, Teach? Yeah, I tried the uh, Bluetooth uh, ear and microphone while teaching, and the one day we did that, uh, I had a five second lag, so it looked like a bad uh, Japanese uh, martial arts film from the 70s. Which was cool. <laughs> That's cool. It happens. Is uh, what we were going for? <laughs> Nice. Not what I was personally going for, but. <laughs> I don't know either, honey. <laughs> Who brought Snuffleupagus to the, uh, the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got a little bit of COVID going on here. Don't give us that COVID. Hands move. I'm getting so all Alex. While we wait, yes. I'm getting the in order. I watched um, that, uh, that Nanchaku uh, seminar that you did. Okay. And um, I don't know, you know, I, I, we did it once when you were in uh, Kansas City back in what, like 2015, 2016, a while back, yes. and then we did over it. But I never got the, um, the figure eight figured out. And I probably had you pause. I was going like going like by second by second or like millisecond by millisecond for like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, just like mimicking your arm movement through the whole thing just over and over and over again. <laughs> so now you're what you're saying. I already get it? I don't know if I got it or not, but I mean, that's what I did. <laughs> I'll have to wait until I see Lee. He'll let me know if I got it or not. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the same way. I micro analyze everything, man. Just, you know, I, a lot of times I'll upload it to my, my uh, coach's eye app because it, it, it can go all the way up to like uh, like 120 frames per second. So I can oh, really yeah. Micro break it down. Please leave your clothes on, Brad. I can't <laughs> promise anything. You know, when I get in front of a camera on a computer, <laughs> now I need to find out. All right, it's officially like right, five so. after. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. There, I'll have to jump okay. in every once in a while. I'm sure we'll still have people coming in. I'm gonna start with uh, a little bit of sticky hand stuff with the ball. So if you didn't find a ball, I gave warnings out on Facebook and in the last couple of sessions that I was going to try to do some of our sticky hand drills and add some footwork to it instead of just our 10th cue hand drills. But that's what I'm going to start with. Is... No video. Pardon? Did I hear you got no video or no audio? It's me. I'm trying to get sorted out on a new computer. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, was that Steve? Yeah. Steve. All right. So we can continue, Steve. Yeah. All right. Up, Hi, Missy. Did Missy enjoy my, my pigtails today? I was cracking up, dude. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my sanity is set in. All right. So uh, first off, I have a video of myself. I, I almost forgot because there's a couple of people here that haven't been here before. Just so you know, if I ask a question, a, like a yes or no question, I've got little bitty tiny heads on a projection screen up on the wall, and it's hard for me to see. And of course, every, most everybody is muted, 
So if I ask a yes or no question, if it's yes, it's a wide thumbs up. If it's a no, it's a big X. Like uh, anytime Alex or I tried to hail a cab close to a military base in Okinawa, it was Chigao. They didn't want to, they thought we were GIs and wouldn't let us in the cab. So yes and no, in case I ask like, can you hear me or does everybody understand? Yes or no. Other thing, just like a speaker, if everybody in here has probably installed a set of speakers, red is right, black is left on me. So if that uh, helps you figure stuff out, we got one more I'm adding here. And where did he go in the list? There he is. There he is. All right, so we just added Ivan. Uh, we just started talking, Ivan. I was telling everybody. What's up, Ivan? For this group, if, like, I ask a question, like, can everybody hear me or whatever, so I can see the little tiny pictures on the screen. If you do a nice wide thumbs up, I know that's a yes. If you do a no, that's a big X in front of your, your neck, your chest. All right. And also, in case you're wondering, just like speaker wiring, red is my right hand, black is my left. All right. So if you have a ball, now is the time to fetch your soccer ball, volleyball, whatever you have. If I'm going to run through some sticky hand drills that we do in class first. So the first half of this session will probably be some of this stuff with some footwork drills. And the second set will probably be just the Tonbo stuff. And then we may get into some individual things depending on how things go tonight. First off, uh, thumbs up or X. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm seeing all wide thumbs. All right. Just have to make sure. Bandwidth is a little bit low tonight. We got real high winds and a storm here in Kansas City uh, kind of blowing in. So hopefully we don't lose anything as we go. All right. So next question for thumbs up uh, or X Chigao. Uh, is the green ball better or the blue ball better in front of me? Actually, uh, we'll say green is thumbs up, blue is X. <laughs> it's about 50-50. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, I just randomly took what was in my left hand. All right. I'm going to go with green. All right. So if you do not, for those of you that are ballers tonight, then just do open hand and carry on just and pretend you have a, a nice. Uh, I'm just checking every once in a while because I keep getting texts about the class. Okay, just making sure. That was the New Zealanders. I don't think they're going to make it tonight. All right. So, all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over kind of our basic sticky hand drill. There's some people here tonight that have never done this with us anyway. But we kind of use this as one of our sticky hand drills to get used to sticking your hands on somebody so you can learn to capture a little bit better. So the first kind of drill is I'm gonna stick the ball in my left hand, take my right hand and put it palm on the ball. And I'm just gonna start going palm to back of the hand, palm to the back of the hand, palm to the back of the hand as I go, all right? Now, initially, my left hand, when you're first learning this, you're almost, you know, if you've got nice long fingers, it kind of helps because you can actually hold the ball and get to it. But eventually, you want to get to where you're kind of doing this motion to where you're not cheating. <laughs> Essentially, if I'm grabbing that ball and going around here, I'm not really doing anything. 
I want to be able to manipulate the item later on, hopefully an arm, wrist, etc., without losing the ball. So I'm going palm, back of hand, palm, back of the hand. And then eventually I start going a little bit down my wrist a little bit. And chime in at any point if these angles are not working for you. If I need to turn more this way, 45 or 90. So now I went from the hand to my wrist. And you see my left hand is arched. So I'm getting a little bit of control. My left hand's not moving very much right now, this first way we're doing it. Later on, we can move both arms a little bit. But right now, I'm just kind of learning a little bit of control with my right red speaker wire. All right? Then I start coming down the forearm a little bit. And eventually get all the way down to about the elbow. And so my hand is actually brushing my left pec as I get down here closer. And then I work my way back down to the wrist, back of the hand, palm, back, palm, back, palm. And then I switch. Now, right hand's gonna be there, back of the left hand, palm, back, And I start doing that same process over again, get a few repetitions in, then I move it a little bit down to the wrist, and then a little bit down the forearm, a few reps, and then move it a couple inches. A few reps, move it a couple inches. So when I get down close to the elbow, I'm essentially right up against my chest as I do that. And then gradually bring it back down. Oh, I got somebody in the waiting room. Stand by. But you keep- Hey, Ivan, I don't know if you're- muted or not but i don't think you're muted because you keep popping up on my screen who does ivan ah okay i'll go ahead and mute myself again but uh ivan kept popping up yeah he shows it muted now sorry steve you're in the waiting room i don't know how long you were there i didn't see that you dropped off and came back yeah, I couldn't, I didn't get any video on my end. Have you got it now, Steve? Steve? Yeah, I'm good. All right. What's up, Steve? Haven't seen you in forever, dude. All right. So one more time. I've got the ball. I'm going to arch my left hand. Again, if you've never done this before, you can kind of cheat a little bit. But eventually you want to get to where you're not holding the ball, you've got your hand kind of arched. I'm going back of the hand, palm, back, palm, back, palm, to my wrist, two or three reps, and then start slowly going down the forearm till I got lots of large motion with my arm, down to my elbow, and then gradually back, forearm, wrist, palm, and then switch to the other side. You don't have to physically switch i'm doing that so that you can see the camera the the wiggly hand is towards the camera Te technical term there remember that palm back of hand palm back of hand wrist two three upper forearm mid forearm down almost to the elbow big swings then back
and to the palm. So that's our basic kind of sticky hand drill we do now. We didn't used to do this with some of the senior students that have been with me for a decade or more. Uh, good old Bob there. We didn't used to do this for our sticky hand drills. We just did things up against each other. These are drills that are kind of uh, very much Chinese styles, do a lot of these. Uh, Fred Weaver that trained with Taika for a long time and was uh, that I trained with for a while. Sifu Weaver, uh, Bagua, Xing Yi, uh, Tai Chi. They have big, heavy wooden balls that they do these drills with. This is a nice, cheap way of doing it instead of paying 150 bucks for a nice wooden ball that somebody made. You know, you get your $5, $4 ball from Walmart. Still gets kind of the same, same general idea and it's nice and cheap. All right, so that's one-handed exercise. Now what you want to start doing is think palm, back of the hand, and then the other side takes over, back of the hand, back of the hand, back of the hand, back of the hand. So I'm almost, I'm doing it kind of small here, but as it comes to the forearms, double, double, I'll use the evil B, B word for some of you that don't train here, double block, double block, double block. See how that's kind of forcing me to keep my elbows in and I can do an open hand or closed hand, but it's a real good drill. If I let my elbows go too wide, then I drop the ball, right? So we don't wanna, we don't, we don't want to drop the ball, right? So, singles, doubles, doing two hands, all right? And so I was going just forward. Now I gotta go slow enough that this doesn't, the video doesn't lag out, but you can go backwards, whoops, forward, backwards. So this is a good way. We've got windmills and bicycles, type two of Taika's philosophies on his one directional philosophy. I can do those with the ball. So I can go, see right now I'm going clockwise, counterclockwise, back pedal, forward pedal. And out, one of Alex's favorite arm bar things that Taika did was he did his, his arm bars with that hooking motion. Right, Alex? So you do this double and you're thinking about those hooks, it really helps you stop thinking that you have to grab and hold on with your monkey thumb, right? As you do an arm bar, because we all, at least here, you've heard me talk about considerably, I do a lot of arm bars in police work where I grab with the thumb, because once I get them to the ground, I've got to pull them up and put them in handcuffs and everything. Well, Taika rarely ever used the thumb to grip in an arm bar, he used the thumb to hook. I don't know how well that's showing up on the video. All right, so that's our simple drill. Now, I want you to start thinking about footwork, and then we're gonna, we're gonna add in just going to our 45s. So you can do back stance, back stance, or you can do hourglass, hourglass. So I'm gonna show some reasons why we do that. For those that haven't been in the last few classes, back stance, here I am, typical Saison or a single with my floating hand. Left hand is long because it's matching the leg that's long. My right shoulder's back if I'm in a back stance. If I'm in an hourglass, then I get that extra range. 
So if I am doing the sticky hand ball work, if my left hand is up, if my left hand is up when I'm doing this, I don't need that range with my left hand. If my right hand is up and my right shoulder is back, I need the range so I can drop down into that hourglass. All right, so that next drill, get in a back stance. You can do it either way. I'm, I'm facing left at a 45. I've got the ball, my left hand high, right hand high, left hand high, right hand high. And you do that a few times till you get kind of used to that bicycle motion. And now when the right hand comes forward to make your shoulder, your right arm longer, put your right heel or your left heel in. Now go to the back stance, hourglass, back, hourglass, back. So the sticky hand drill becomes a range drill. So I'm square to my target. If my target is here where this green frisbee is, I don't know how well the colors show up on, on Zoom or not, but if, if my chest is here and I'm out riding my motocross bike and I step into a back stance, you see my right hand is short because I'm in a back stance and that puts my right shoulder back. If I go to hourglass, now I'm even and can ride my motorcycle. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm teaching my body range. And again, those of you that haven't been here the last couple of weeks, we've been doing a lot of drills like this where we do matching single, cross single, and we adjust our range with an hourglass. So back stance, hourglass, double, back stance, hourglass. Of course, you can make the argument that the low hand on a double is too far back, so double should be hourglass both ways. Head, if I do, if I do opposing right arm and left leg, this is way back, and actually, because it turns my chest, if my target's here, it's really far away. But hourglass puts me into a long arm position. So I have a, a quick question, and, I, and I'm yeah. sorry, I've already gone over this in, in previous recordings, but when you do your back stance, what would you say your weight displacement is in, in comparison to cat stance? So typically with back stance, what we were always told was 70% on the back, 30% on the front. Okay. And then cat stance, you rolled back a little bit more to the, the back leg. So uh, maybe 80%, 20%, okay. something, something in that ballpark. And then when you do your, um, your hourglass, that's basically the Sankaku Dach 50-50? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so, thank you. So... Uh, good question. What I was told on our hourglass in exercises like this, we were told 50-50, but Taika once told us that it's 50-50 it's at rest. Okay, and what he, what he meant by that was if I'm coming in and my arm is short, you know, I'm short, my, my right is back, my right hand is short, to hit my target. So if I go hourglass, that impact should probably be 60-40 and then settle back to 50-50. So for that point of impact, I'm a little bit, my hips are driving into it, so it's a little bit past 50-50 for just the moment of impact, and then it settles awesome. and goes on to what, wherever you go from there. Awesome. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome explanation. Thank you. All right. So, all right. So I'm back here <clears throat> in my back stance. And what I'm going to do is just left hand up, back stance, right hand up, hourglass. 
left up back stance, right up hourglass. And just try and work that a little bit. And so right now, I'm trying to do two, both hands instead of just one hand, where this one is kind of palming it and I'm just doing that. I'm trying to exchange backhand right, backhand left, all right? So if I did backhand left, now the right hand is too far away, so I drop hourglass, backhand right, back to back stance, backhand left. Hourglass, back. Hourglass, back. Hourglass, back. Hourglass, back. Hourglass, back. And we probably have a good two more weeks of sequestration, at least, or at least here in Kansas City we do. So this is a really good drill with a ball that gives you a little bit of feedback since you don't have, most of you don't have something, we call this Madonna here in our dojo. You don't have something like this at your home. Most people don't. All right. So that's the initial basic going to one side, of course. You should be able to go right hands on top, back stance, left hands on top, hourglass, right hands on top, back stance, left, hourglass, back, hourglass, back, hourglass, back, hourglass. All right, so I'm gonna let you guys do that for just a second and I'm gonna walk up and kind of look at least at my students and get a swig of water as I do that. And nobody else is in the deal. All right. Robert's got like a huge beach ball. <laughs> There's a reason I played soccer. Yeah, Ivan's no stranger to this. He's flowing better than I was. Holy guacamole. I have to kind of tab over to see everybody. And Steve, I got to tell you, Steve's got the biggest, bluest balls of the bunch. Uh, <laughs> that, that's like one of those sit on exercise balls. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All righty. <laughs> yeah, everybody's looking like they're getting the hang of it. Sorry to speak out of turn. Steve, I haven't seen you and I don't know how long. Nice to see you. <laughs> Is that Ivan? Yeah. <laughs> Likewise, Ivan. Good to see you, too. It's so the, uh, some hellos. What's up, Steve? What's up, Ivan? <laughs> Good to see you. It's the uh, monthly she and I I was talking about doing. But at any rate, all right, so that's, uh, you know, just going to one angle and sitting there and working back, hour, back, hour, back, hour. So then what you want to be able to do is go, I'm going back to my left side, black speaker wire. I'm going to my left 45, left hands on top, back, right hands on top, hourglass. Come back, and now right's on top, back stance, whoops, left's on top, hourglass. And so left is on top, but I'm going a full revolution around back to left is on top, right is on top. Right is on top, but I'm going to go right to the corner, the opposite corner, so I do a full revolution. Right is on top, 
left is on top, hourglass. Come back, left is gonna do a full revolution because I'm going to my left, left is on top, back stance, and then right is on top, hourglass. Closed hands is fine, open hands is fine as well. So this starts kind of turning for, for those, particularly those out-of-towners who have been in, the, so, uh, in Oyata's lineage for a while, it starts almost looking a little bit like turtle exercise if you are opening your hands. So again, this particular variant that I'm doing right now is I'm going to the left, left is on top, then right is on top with hourglass, and then right hand goes one full revolution around, right back stance, or, well, it's a lot of back stance, but I'm in a back stance, and then I'm in an hourglass, okay? So left on top, right on top. Right on top again, left on top, hourglass. One full revolution around, and that, those revolutions don't have to be hand, they can be wrist, they can be forearm, it doesn't really matter. You should be mixing it up, you should be trying all of them, but I'm sure for a few, at least a few of the people in this group tonight, this is something somewhat new to you, at least the entire combination of footwork and handwork. All right, so left on top, back stance, right on top, hourglass. Full revolution round, right on top, back stance, left on top, hourglass. Full revolution, left on top, back stance, right on top, hourglass. Full revolution, right, back, left, hourglass, left, right, right, left, left, right, I almost did left, left, <laughs> right, right, okay, I'm going to be spying on you for a little bit and see how that goes. Uh, I should just pin Ivan. He's done this a few times. <laughs> Looking real fluid there, Ivan. Not that everybody else is doing bad, but Ivan's definitely got some flow to his. The king of flow. Alex is nice and smooth. Alex, Alex is wearing a black shirt, black pants, and has a black backdrop, so it just looks like floating arms, a ball, and a head. <laughs> you don't have to change on my account. I just like making fun of you, Alex. Uh, <laughs> no taking. I will, I will be more visible next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it wasn't dark out, it wouldn't be a big deal. But... All right. So now, we're gonna have a little bit more fun. All right, so I'm just gonna face straight ahead for right now, but I want you to think now about, I'm gonna, left hand's gonna be primary, then right hand, then left, then right. And by primary, I mean, if I do a single, left hand is primary, the high hand is primary. If I do a double, Right hand is primary because it's high. Head, left hand's primary. You know, I might be doing something around here. I might be doing something here, but that's what I kind of mean by primary. All right? So now what I'm looking to do 
is I want you to think about doing a single, doing a double, and so that was left primary, right hand's on top now, right is primary. Now I want you to think about doing a head, high face, whatever you want to call it, but it's because you're holding, if you've got like the volleyball or soccer ball size, you're going to be basically doing a head with a back fist. Uh, if you're Steve with this big giant 28 inch ball, you, you'll be more almost like a, a head and a low cover. So kind of depends on the size of the ball you are using. But any rate, so I'm thinking single, double, the hand that's down is coming up. And it's almost like the, also the, the motion in three of our open hand kata here that we do. All right, so single and open hand is fine, double, head, and then so now I need to go right side, so single, double, right head, left single, right double, left head, right single, left double, right head, left single, right double, <laughs> left head. I got a little carried away there and went, <laughs> went one revolution too many. Right single, left double, right head, left single, right double, left head. All right. So those get a little bit more complicated. Usually the head is the one that gives people some problems initially because you, you're really kind of doing that kusan ku swivel as you go up high. And initial tendency I've seen with most students is they don't want that, that bottom hand to fo follow, so they end up losing the ball there. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our two corner drill. So we're going to do the 45s again, except what we're going to do is we're going to go left single with a back stance, right double with an hourglass, left sing, uh, left head, the video's cutting off my hand there, I need to squat more, back stance, so single double head, and then the right single is next, so I go to my right and I got a right single in a back stance, hourglass, left double, so that hourglass brings that left hand closer, then back stance, I need to back up a little bit, because y'all can't see my hands when I go up to the high, there, so now I got to do left to the left side, double, back stance, or uh, hourglass, and then Left head, back stance, cover, right back stance, left double hourglass, right head, back stance. Here we go. Left, right, left. Right, left, right. Left, right, left, cover, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. 
So you just keep doing that flow drill for a little bit. And I'm gonna come up and, and look, talk and drop the ball at the same time. See if everybody's getting that. So we're trying to get our chest to go at the 45 degrees instead of 90. Wow, Steve's ball shriveled. Missy must have found him a smaller ball because I was picking on him. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Everybody's kind of getting the hang of that. I'm just going to keep going if there are some middle level Q students here that maybe this is going to be a little bit more difficult. There's <laughs> the majority of the people here are Udancha, so this probably isn't as difficult for them because they've been around the block a little bit. But I'm going to continue on if the next level or any subsequent level gets a little bit too much for you, just step back mentally to the previous exercise. All right, so just like some of Taika's other drills that we did and some of the ones that we've done this week, so single, double, uh, single, double, head, where I'm doing the footwork changes. Of course, you can't see because I put the ball right in the wrong place. Single, square up, back, back, Square up here. That's essentially what we're doing. And again, these can go, I can go 90s, 45s, straight ahead, back. For those that have done these drills, these spider versions, we can do these same ball drills that way. The version we're doing right now is, or that we've been doing for the last few minutes, is pretty simple because there's no real change up. So I'm going this direction, I'm starting left, left, then double, then left, left again. And then I'm going right, 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 or left, right, right, right. So there's no change ups. What we're gonna do next with the ball is we're gonna do one hand movement and one foot movement. And maybe, depending on how much time we get, wow, it's already been 45 minutes. Do some others or we can save some of the other ones till next week so we can get to the stick stuff. I'd like to do about 50 to an hour each of those drills. We're gonna go single, double, head, single, double, head, initially, is what we're going to do here. So, this one, if the left foot is forward, the dominant hand is the left. If the right foot is forward, the dominant hand is the right. So, it'll be left single, face and left, right double, and again, on a double, You've got that low strike, so I prefer on my doubles to do an hourglass. Now, left head to the left side, and then we're back to single. So I'm on the right side with a right single, left 45 with a left double, and right head on the right side, okay? So this one's pretty simple. 
but we will throw a little change up in there in a little bit and it'll change from will change to where we've got the op it's always the opposite up. so just for now we're going to do the same side version and then i'll throw the change up in a little bit and that'll probably be the end of the ball drills for the day all right so single left side right side double and i'm doing hourglass left side head Right side single, left side double. Right head, single, left, double, right, left, single, double, head, single, double, head, single, double, head. So that's the, the first initial version. I'm gonna watch a couple of my students, see how they do on that, and then we'll press on to that other, the change up. All right, so it looks like everybody's getting that pretty pretty well. So we're just gonna do a change up. So we're gonna do single, double, head, head, single, double, head, head. So just to throw a change up in there. You could do it many different ways. You could do single, double, head, single, single, whatever, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm just throwing up an easy way to change up. You can actually make your students do single double head and then single double head, but with the change up in there. But just for simplistic sakes, I'm gonna do single double head head. So here, here's how it goes. Single to the left, I'm matching, left foot forward, left hand up. Double to the right, Right hand's up, right foot is forward. And then head, left is up, left is forward. But then I'm just gonna do another head while I'm still facing that direction. So what's that do? That makes it when I go to the next direction, I am cross body. So I've got my left up and my right foot forward. And because my arm is short, I have to go hourglass. So I am single, and then now I'm double. So my right is forward, my left is forward. And then I, oops, forgot what I was doing. I go to my right with the left. So my right is forward, and it's cross body, so I've got to do that hourglass. So then I just throw in that extra head, and then I go to my left. Now I'm right back to where I'm matching. Left is up, left is forward. Right is up, right is forward. Left is up, left is forward. And I do an extra head. Of course, the, my arm was short, so I had to go hourglass. Now I'm crossbody, hourglass. Cross body double hourglass, cross body head hourglass. Then I throw my extra head just to transition, and I come around and I'm matching again. Left, left, right, right, left, left, transition, 
left, right, right, left, left, right, switch, left, left, right, right, left, left, extra, left, right, right, left, left, right, extra, match, double match, head match, extra, left, right, right, left, left, right, extra transition, left, left, right, right, left, left, transition, crossbody, crossbody double, crossbody head, switch, same body left, same body right, oops, that's a double, same body left, transition, crossbody left, crossbody double, crossbody head, transition, and I'm gonna watch. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I'm, you can keep on working on it a little bit as I just yammer. I'm gonna yammer for a few minutes to close out this session on the ball before we switch to the tonbo or single stick. These drills are great when you're solo by yourself. They really, after a while of doing it, you can really get a tactile feeling of doing things like land turtle, sea turtle, land turtle, sea turtle, land turtle, sea turtle. You can get that tactile feeling of staying with your opponent so that when, when the bad guy's here, you just don't slap and his arm goes away. You slap and hook and capture and are able to stick with that opponent. That's kind of the goal of these drills. Now, I don't have to iron out and write down exactly what you have to do to make these drills your own. It should be pretty evident, particularly those that have had any of the spider web lessons to this date. Think about doing single double head to every possible direction you can go and throw in those transitions every once in a while so that you get cross body. Doesn't have to be any rhyme or reason to the way you do it unless you just, you're that anal that you have to diagram something out. But I can go single, double, head, single, double, head, and I can go all these different angles I can even do like the spider three footwork as I do those and throw a change up in every once in a while. Doesn't have to be the 
right now we're we're doing duples for the musicians out there. We're just going two directions, but we're doing three single double head. We're doing three hand motions, but we're just going two different directions. So that kind of is three against two changes things up. You start going two, three, four, five directions, or change that into six against, so it's six against three hand motions. Actually, technically there's six hand motions because you've got matching, single, double, head, and you got crossbody, single, double, head. Doing all these hand motions, you get used to doing your turtle motions, your sticky hands, going every possible direction. Exercise two, well, at our dojo, for those non-Kansas Cityans out there, for you non-Missourians, Kansas City, our first introduction to punching, blocks, strikes is two directions. We go 45-45. Next thing they get is exercise two, where they're going 90, 180, 90, 180, 90, 180, with various different footwork versions. And then we'll get to, I think flower petals is what a lot of the Brute people call this. Uh, we, in Kansas City, most of us called it the wagon wheel, the spokes on the wheel, wagon wheel, whatever. But you've got those eight directions. But you can also do these exercises to where maybe you're doing shallow line, single, shallow line, double, deep line, deep line. So you're doing the shallow line, deep lines. Well, shallow line, that's, there's two shallow lines, two deep lines. That's four directions against three hand motions, and that forces you to have opposites and same side up as you do the drill. Again, I think a lot of Taika's harping on spider and cramming spider patterns down our throats for so many years was getting us used to doing every possible strike or block or parry at every possible angle, turning our body at every possible degree, etc., to where we're comfortable going any direction with any hand motion. One I hadn't discussed is these, mostly what we've been doing is inside looking out spider web, but there's also the second half of spider one, kind of midway through spider two, where you're doing outside looking in. So you can go single, double, head, single. So now I'm crossbody because I was going four directions and doing three hand motions. So it forces you into every possible version of movement and sticky hands all at the same time. All right. So with that, I'll check and see if anybody has any questions. If not, we'll move on to throwing sticks around. Any questions? No question, just a comment. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, that was Alex. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, man. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Similar, similar comment just real quickly. Can I steal some of that? <laughs> I think steal some of what? Some of those exercises. Oh, dude, exercises. dude, dude, I didn't invent this. This is yeah. I, I was just <laughs> the, the first hurt. The, the working on my students with the with a Joe and the tripod in my last class. Uh, but I like the idea of using a ball. Yeah, uh, so nice. I mean, ever since the first human picked a watermelon or a cantaloupe, I'm sure somebody. Uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago thought of this before I started doing any of it. So <laughs> there's, 
there's no trademark or copyright infringement going on uh, here. Yeah. Uh, I just think this is a, really a fun way of working on sticky hands by yourself. I, especially, you know, we, I don't know where, what everybody else is like, but Kansas City, Missouri has set the quarantine to a minimum of the 16th, I think. I just posted it today and I can't even remember. That's what this gray stuff does. It's that's this gray stuff is actually gray matter leaking out of my head. Uh, somewhere on the 15th or the 16th or the 17th is when it's through the 15th. 15th and then 16th is this the first Saturday after. Yeah, yeah that's that when we have first. that's when we have the twister parties. Yeah, yeah. So it's Saturday and 16th is the first day we possibly can open. Of course, that's still like 17 and a half days away and the pandemic can explode between now and then and they may extend it, so who knows. But at any rate, that's uh, kind of the, the, the gist is it's a great way to do sticky hand drills when you have no bodies to twist, all right? So like- Hey Lee, did you use a, a kickball, like a softer kickball? Are you talking about what I had just had in my hand? Yes, is that like a little bit more softer kickball? Yeah, that's that's your that's your standard red dodgeball, you know. Okay, kickball. yeah. So I think I used the basketball, and so it was too hard, and it doesn't really replicate, let's say, the tissue of the muscle. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think using the kickball, I'm gonna get one tomorrow, man. I think I'll be able to kind of dig into it a little more for my transitions than I did with my my basketball. It was just too hard. But I think with a kickball, yeah, exactly, it kind of resembles the, the, the texture of an arm where you can kind of dig in and get a little more sticky. So I, I think that's yeah. something to get out for myself. Alex, yeah, I'm that's just definitely, say, particularly if you don't overblow it. Right. <laughs> Alex, I'm just going to say, if you're going to do the technique or not, my arm, you're going to want to use a bowling ball to practice. <laughs> well, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> It's all that hair. <laughs> yeah, definitely get your still toe shoe, shoes out before you work on the, the bowling ball. Yes. All right, Steve. Yes, we see your giant blue ball. You should really talk about talk to Missy about that. All right. All right, so uh, my next question whoa, is, I think with the lighting, the white probably washes out. The blue is probably a little easier to see. I could also go brown or black. So there's black and blue. I think those are the two best. Uh, any comments on that? I think blue looks best. Yeah, I like the blue. You can really see the blue better. All right. So, so white it is. Hey. So, uh, back to the, uh, the ball deal. One thing I didn't explain is starting out brand new Q students, I usually use a little bit bigger ball. Uh, 13, I think that means 13 inches, I don't know. But uh, that brachial plexus tie into on each side, this is a little bit wider than that. It makes it a little bit easier for the newer students to do it. The smaller the ball is, the more difficult it seems to be, at least for me. So I've got, in the dojo, several different sizes. And yeah, again, I, I just get them. The first one I got off, uh, I got at CVS. And then the rest of them, I've got the various sizes, like the large one I got at uh, off of Amazon. This right, one's great. This one's too small for me. That one's too small for you? Yeah, it's pretty difficult. What's uh, about what size is it? Uh, well, here's my head. <laughs> All right. You're you're about this big on the screen. So, so. so very small. So, 
Yes. Unlike Brad's head. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do is just some of Tyka's straight stick. And I don't know why he picked me for straight stick when he did well before he died. Maybe it was because I was a cop and he used to teach police tactics. Uh, I, I don't have any idea. I never got an explanation. That's just an assumption of mine. Um, I had afternoons off. Maybe that's why he picked me, just because I was close and available. I don't know. But a lot of the footwork we've done the last couple of weeks, where we've done the pin and float drill and gone off to different corners, a lot of that was initially taught to me when he was teaching me some of the law enforcement hand drills with the straight baton. So for those that haven't been here the last couple of weeks, a lot of the drills we've been doing has been pin and float. And what I mean by that is, I'll go ahead and like do Nahanshi Shodan. If, if I do the standard Nahanshi, the way a lot of people you see on the interwebs do it, my weight comes up, my head goes up, and then I go to the right. So when I do this, the center of my body, stand by for Lee, Lee's lovely uh, audiovisual aids. So if, and of course it's not perfectly straight because I was looking down as I did it. All right, so if I want to go to the right, commonly people will shift their weight before they go to the right to take the weight off the right leg so they can go right. So what happens is there's my center line and you see the line on the floor. I shift and then I come back across the line. So what Taika had me do with Tonbo and later he uh, drove this home with Nahachi is if I pin my left leg in and lift the weight off my right foot, I can only fall to the right. I'm forcing myself into a fall. So I don't go left, right. So I don't cross that line twice. Once shifting my weight and then going back to the right. Exaggerating excessively here the way I'm doing this. So in Nahachi, what he had us do is we would pin, and then when we kicked, it wasn't possible because we did that pin to lift up and cross the line and then cross it in again to go back right. So you'll hear me say, that's the crooked stick. You'll hear me say pin and float, and in our pin and float drills, if I'm going to my left, I will pin my right knee, and I'm exaggerating. I don't know if you can see it very well. I'm trying to exaggerate. If I pin, hopefully that's showing up well. If I pin and then take the weight off my left foot, then all my foot is actually bladed because of the pin, so the weight is on the right edge of my right foot, and then it allows me to just push and glide the direction I need to go. So that's pin, float, and then when I release the, the last little bit, I've pinned and taken the weight off the hill, and then when the weight comes off the front of my left foot, then I just glide to my left. So that's the pin and float, which you'll hear me say numerous times as we do this. Tykes Tonbo, a lot of people in law enforcement, this is very common, this is a common hold, you know, I'm up here in this position. Tyka liked to have the stick in this manner. He would put pressure with his thumb on both sides, and then that's essentially a stick pin and float. So I'm pinning, and then if I let go with my left hand, the right hand strikes. 
If I get that tension and let go of the right hand, the left hand strikes. <gasps> yeah. So, your bad guy doesn't know which way you're going to swing. He doesn't know if the right hand swinging, the left hand swinging. And I can also do backhand strikes, backhand striking hooks. Uh, Puno, is that the correct pronunciation there, Alex? <laughs> so that was the, the general way that Taika liked to hold the stick. So if I'm here, I can pin with my right knee. I've got equal tension with my hands. I pin with my right knee, float my left heel, and I strike with that right. If I pin with my left and float my right, I predispose myself to go one direction. I know Alex has heard me preach this. I'm not sure if Jared or Ivan have. I've preached it a few times at some of the Carolina seminars. But Taika had a philosophy that before the first punch was thrown, he already knew which direction he was going. He knew that no matter what comes at me, I'm going left, I'm going right. He knew that ahead of time. So he decreased the reactionary gap because he didn't have to do any calculated math to decide if he was going right or left. All right, so that's kind of general philosophy with the pin and float drill. So initially what I'm gonna have you guys do is get here in a nice, natural, relaxed stance, get tension with your baton, and then we're initially just gonna, we're gonna alternate going left and right. So I'm gonna go to my left first, depending on if you wanna mirror me or go left first, it's up to you. But if I'm in this position and I wanna to go to my left, I'm gonna pin my right. So pin right, float left, build up tension, and then as you let go of your left hand, you just slide to the left, okay? I need to move some of my audio, vis or audio visual, my, some of my visual aids. They ain't saying anything. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna to go to my right. So if I'm going to my right, I pin my left, build up my tension, I float my right. And then when I let go of my right hand, I also release my right foot and away I go. So we're just going to do a, a few reps of this, left, right, left, right, and I'm just going to say pin, float, release. So the way it'll go is I'll say pin, right, float, left, release. Pin, left, float, right, release. And right now, I'm just going straight on my east-west line. Obviously, I could make the decision that I'm going to go 45, northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Obviously, things need to change a little bit to go north and south. All right. So here we go. I'm going left, then right. So pin, float, release. And when I release, this other hand's coming up. Because eventually in this drill, even though you probably don't have Madonna in your home, a bag with Madonna on it, one of the drills I like to do, even in the air, I'll do it first with Madonna here, is pin, float, strike. So see I'm covering with my hand, and then I come up in the web, capture, and come through. So that drill which is where we're going here after we do 10 or so reps of this, is pin, float, strike, web, capture. All right? So skip the web capture. That's just the preview of where we're going after I see if everybody's getting this motion. If you've 
done this with me before, feel free to get your extra reps in. Doesn't matter. Going to the left. Ready. Pin right, float left, release. Pin left, float right, release. Pin right, float left, release. Pin left, float right, release. Pin right, float left, release. Pin left, float right, release. Pin right, float left, release. Pin left, float right, release. Pin right, float left, release. Oh, my kick came up. Pin left, float right, release. And two more. Pin right, float left, release. Pin left, float right, release. All right, do some of those on your own. I'm gonna stare at my lovely students. At least two of my students have never done Tonbo, so. This should be fun for them. And then a Ramaza guy has never touched a stick before ever in his life. Hey, I see your wife is there. <laughs> Haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's probably the last DC seminar I think I saw you. Ah, that was probably 2015? All right, everybody's got the hang of that pretty, pretty well. So now what I want you to think of, and we're gonna do several versions of this, is just what I just showed. So I want you to think, so my hand isn't back here around my face. I'm thinking, initially this is unarmed. Okay? Cops usually fight with baton, it's not baton against baton. Uh, maybe riot, you know, Taika taught police tactics to police on Okinawa. So a lot of this stuff is stuff he was teaching in the 50s and 60s uh, via his friend that ended up being, I, I don't know what the correct term was, but he was the head of the, the precinct or whatever there in Naha that I got to meet a couple of times when I was over there with Taika. But at any rate, what we're gonna be doing is if a punch comes out, just imagine right now that this is just a punch. So this is the arm coming out. I'm gonna pin right, float left. I'm going here, I'm throwing, I'm basically doing a double block. My left hand is coming up, but it's out away from my body. It's not in here for this, all right? I'm here and my back leg is going to come up to push that arm as my stick goes up and wraps around 
and then my front leg will move or kick whatever it needs to do. All right. So again, I'll do it here with Madonna, and then I'll do it like you're going to do since you don't have something with arms. All right. I'm coming here. If the bad guy's arm is here and I try to bring the stick in, particularly if you're using 28 inch Estrema, then, then you're going to get tangled up on yourself. So I want to go here. My back leg pushes that arm out of the way so that I've got the space to navigate. All right. So I'm here, back leg pushes. And I'm, I'm basically playing violin in the web of my hand. And then front leg comes forward as I trap that arm. So what that looks like straight on is pin, float. I build up my tension. I go west along that line. Left hand, which is beyond 90 degrees. This is 90 plus. Goes forward naturally because my back leg is pushing it forward and therefore pushing the arm forward. If it's in close, then I can't get that stick in and make the wrap. So I've struck him probably in the ribs, intercostals. I push and then wrap and catch with that hand. All right. And then obviously I pin left, float right. I do that same thing. I don't want to be here. I want to be out here. Back leg pushes, comes to the web, wraps around and captures. Now Taika did numerous wraps, some over the top, some underneath, but this one is the over the top wrap and roll. And that's a good way if stick tonbo is new to you, if you just hold your hand out, go pinky up, roll, pinky up, roll and grab, web, pinky up, roll and grab. That's a good way to practice that. But we're going to skip ahead because you guys are all doing such, such great jobs according to all the little icons I have on the screen. So here we go. We're going to step west first to our left. We're going to pin right. Float left, tension built up, strike, plus 90, left foot, right pinky up, roll into the web, and continue. I'm going at a 45 now. So I went west, I come up, and then I go off at northeast. Ah, this angle, and then this angle those looking overhead. Now I'm going to go to the right. Got my tension. I pin left, float right, strike, plus 90, push as that back leg comes up, wrap, catch, and drop forward at that 45. Reset. Tension. Pin right, float left, Go left, back leg, pinky up, roll and catch at a 45, reset. Tension, pin left, float right, strike. Back leg, pinky up, roll, 45, reset. Tension. Pin float, strike. Back leg, pinky up, roll, and move. Reset. Pin left, float right, strike. Back leg, pinky up, roll, and grab. All right, we're going to keep doing this. I want you to think about, let's see if I can get this to where you can see it worth it worth a hoot. So if I do this motion, come up, 
instead of thinking coming straight down, think towards their face. So I'm doing a little bit, instead of a straight capture, I'm doing a little bit of an arc towards their face. If you think about, I don't know if I can do this with Bob or not, but if, if I'm here and I come, come up, my hand is just coming straight down here, it doesn't affect Bob that much. But if I go towards his face and then capture, strike up into my web, and then towards his face, or maybe I hit him at the base of the neck or right there in the collarbone as I go, then something coming towards their face is going to cause this reaction, right? And so what's the human body do when their face goes back? What do they do with their arms? It's natural. They start to straighten their arm. So that's a little bit, that initial strike gets this, and then you go to their face, and that arm's straight. It's a little bit of a teme. You're getting a, a pause there, and then you go to their face, you're getting that jerk back reaction. So as I do this motion, instead of straight roll, now start thinking of just a little ellipse towards their face as you do it. All right. Lee. Yes. Is it, would that be the same thing as like in a rowing, like in a rowing fashion like we would do if it was empty-handed? Almost like you would take, what's that? Uh, did you say rowing or rowing? Rowing, yes, yeah, like you would pat, like row, like you would row. Okay. Is it, is it yeah, the same? I don't, is it the I same? don't speak Jacksonville, I'm sorry. That's okay, uh, I don't either half the time. <laughs> Yeah. I try not to, at least. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I got to laugh. I, I heard ruin. I'm like, ruin? What are you ruin? Ruin. Does that like ruin? R-U-I-N to you? That's, that's what it sounded like to me. R-U-I-N. Yeah. I thought it sounded like ruin. No. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I ruin Bob's <laughs> at, at punching me. Yes. But okay. yeah, it's kind of like rowing. Right. Okay. Personally, I like ruin. Ruin their face on the way to the arm bar. Now, there you go. You ruin their face. I, you know, whatever gets you through the day. If you're Amish, <laughs> churn it. I don't know. Okay. All right. So we're going to go right back. I want you to think about all those little deals now. So instead of straight, most everybody in here has seen in when when we do, when Taika did these captures, the motion was never straight, linear. It was never, what I, I got in a lot of t trouble at one of Alex's seminars because everything I said re regarding this came out uh, a little bit the wrong way. But this was not like your walnut cracker. I'm trying to not turn everything into innuendos. It's kind of hard. So that that straight motion, like a walnut cracker. Hopefully, everybody gets that. I don't want straight motion like that. I want curved motion. So when I do any of these motions, like see, I'm I'm doing a curve, and then when I come in here, it's not straight. It's Curve. And I know I, I'm pretty sure I showed that in Jacksonville, didn't I, at one of your dojo seminars, Jerry? Yeah, I got thumbs up. So straight motion, like pressure on the, on the right or the top and the bottom of an arm going straight into the forearm is not going to get a drop unless, you know, they're really nerve sensitive. But if you do that rowing motion where I'm forcing the top part of the arm one way and the bottom part of the arm the other way, that's when I'll get the, the bend in the knee buckle, whether they feel the pain or not. Most of Taika's techniques cause pain to the majority of people, but they weren't pain dependent. Taika would say pain bonus. 
So don't rely on linear motion will get you possibly pain, but it won't get the, the motion that we want, the, the bend of the arm, the buckle of the knees, that kind of stuff. Lee, Lee if I can add to that, because that's an excellent point when, when dealing with weaponry, it's the same concept with empty hand. The idea is to take the sinew, which is like a very thin web-like structure that protects the muscle and the, and the uh, nerve structure. When you just come in on it from a, from a very primal dermatome, it, it, we're designed to take that. But the moment you start cutting that sinew and moving the muscle grain, whether they feel pain or not, you will get to the, it digs deeper and deeper into the nerve. So you, you still get the physiological side effects, but maybe not just the pain reflex. So it mechanically, it still works well. And I think that's a great point to bring up that you, you really got to cut through that sinew to affect the muscle, tendon, ligament, and nerve structure. Yeah, totally, totally agree. My students know it as uh, the 3D, three-dimensional motion redirection, dermal redirection. So when you when you touch the skin, you're you're fishing around, going different directions. Dermal redirection is just what we kind of coined it. The, I wish some of the New Zealand guys were here tonight. Mm -hmm. They actually liking it to a sausage. So yes. <laughs> I thought this was just hilarious when I heard this uh, the first time I taught a seminar in New Zealand. They talk about like a sausage. You got that skin on the outside, but you can kind of wring it and the, the skin and the tissue moves around, but you got the solid part on the inside. I love it. That's great. <laughs> Different ways of saying the same thing. No, I'm right. hungry. Now, now you're hungry. Go to High B, order the pineapple bratwurst. Those are just awesome. Just a little plug. But don't put substitute, substitutions okay or you'll end up with pigtails drinking juice bottles. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue doing, we're gonna continue going to the, the side direction coming up towards the collarbone or face and in. Now, something else, when this comes in, I'm actually curling it, right? So when I touch the muscle, my hand is like a coffee mug. I don't want to spill my drink. I'm putting ulnar bone into my person's forearm, upper arm, whatever I grab, could be the neck. But as I do that, that churning the butter, see how I'm now, I'm, I'm at a 45. So I'm, I'm putting the bone in, like we all like our ribs, and then changing the direction as it goes in. So when I come up, I'm going towards the face, getting initial contact, and then you'll see my hand turns, for those that have done bow, that should look familiar, but I'm doing that kind of turn motion. So there's definitely 3D motion to both hands as I do this. If this is day one of your ton bow skills, you know, do as much as you can, but think about that as an end game. And this video will be up on our members area of the website for you to review later on, but I'm constantly changing the angle of my forearm as I do that. All right, let's go back and knock out 10 reps of this, and then we'll press on. Well, I'll, I'll watch and see how my newbies are doing, and then we'll press on. <laughs> Need a different color tape. I got the same color tape as I do stick. Kind of looks uh, interesting there. Tension, pin right, float left, out, back leg, end towards the face, grab and twist your forearm, reset, pin left, float right, out, back leg, push, towards the face, down, twist your forearm. 
Ready, pin right, float left, strike, back leg up, towards the face, drop, twist that forearm. Pin left, float right, out, back leg up, push, towards the face, drop, twist. Pin float, release, back leg, neck, drop, twist. Reset, some tension. Pin left, float right, release, up and push, face, drop, twist. Tension, pin right, float left, out. Up, face, drop. Don't know if anybody caught it, but I did a little variant there accidentally. Instead of just coming up with the back leg, I did both. But I kind of put the cart before the horse. My apologies. But that is a variation. Tension, pin left, float right. Out. Push, pinky up, face, drop. Twist. Tension. Pin right, float left. Out. Pinky up, face, twist. Reset. Tension. Pin left, float right. Out. Push. Face. Wrap. Roll or twist. I'm gonna do two more. Tension, pin right, float left, out, up, face, wrap, twist. All right. Tension, pin left, float right, release, push, pinky up, face, rotate. All right, I just want to explain one more thing, uh, and then I'm going to come up and watch a little bit. So, as I do this and come up, come in, now, right now what I've been doing is I've been kind of scooping in, kind of like an inside forearm strike. If you do that with a bad guy, if I go that direction, it will cause their arm to stretch forward. You can also, I can go this way, and it's a little hard to visualize because this thing doesn't have an elbow, but you can control your bot, your opponent. I can go out and in and redirect which direction they're going. Redirect which direction. Thanks for joining us here at the Office of Redundancy Office, the Dojo of Redundancy Dojo. All right, that's that. I want to just let you guys do that motion a little bit on your own, and I'm going to look at my students.
that's a little hard to visualize for some of you, particularly those of you that have never played with single stick before. A couple of you are doing the motion and this hands way back here. And then when you, when you take the short end up, you're having to kind of go around to catch it. So if you, uh, you'll, you'll get there after some practice and think about the standard Oyata tennis ball under the arm. That's where our hand, if you put your tennis ball underneath your armpit and drop it down, that's how far away your hand should be on this kind of cover. I should be out like this. And some of you are still back here like this. So if I go to do this motion, think about a lot of the open hand techniques we do, it's touch the shoulder and come out. It's that same kind of philosophy with a stick, we've got that extra range. So with a stick, a lot of times that first motion, we're going farther away to protect ourselves. So we're probably not going to hit the shoulder, but I'll probably be right where their forearm is if I have my hand out here, like there's a tennis ball underneath here. If I don't think that way, and that's where Taika's single, double, well, head, you, the tennis ball would drop. But, but that's how far out he wanted that. If you're in here, see, I have, I have to bring that stick all the way up here. And if I do that with Alex, Alex is going to pin this right up against, he's going to use my stick against me. I don't want that. I want to be out here and able to come on in and have this giant to have this giant circle instead of being here up close to my body all right of course i use two red balls with a red shirt and red pants so that probably wasn't the best visual for you so really think about, try to get that hand out away from your body, come up and grab. The next thing I'm gonna do requires some de different, definite visualization. And I know I've taught this at a couple of the South Carolina and North Carolina. You, you border guys are confusing, you know that Alex? is Taika would commonly do this motion and that would cause the bad guy to bend down. Well, now what's exposed is that neck. Of course, you have to visualize this because for some reason Bob here won't bend over, but what I'm gonna be going to do is I'm gonna change my right grip, come up around the head next, and I'm gonna be in this position. Right, but his head would be down here. It wouldn't be up here. I'm having to get on my toes with with Bob because he doesn't want to play alone. All right. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is the pin float. We're going to do everything that we did before. But as you do this motion, if I curl in like I'm doing the old-fashioned inside forearm or inside block. That should bend them over and put their head right here. All I do is I start to push, but my, my hand, I'm trying, maybe if I get a little closer, my bottom hand opens and grabs. Top hand is not changing. This is my top hand, it's not changing. All right, I'm here, and I'm, as I push, I come here, and I trap, and I'm going to turn. My heel is going to come out. So this arm is straight, and it'll be up against an opponent's neck, and I'm going to be coming around. So my elbow comes up to capture that head. That's what we're trying to visualize. All right, we'll see if this works. On the level, first time I've ever tried to teach this, Zoom with no bad guys. So 
Again, uh, let me do it once both sides, and then we'll do a set of 10 or so of them. All right, so tension, pin right, float left, strike, out away from my body, back leg comes up, pinky, right pinky up, capture, out. So my arm is almost parallel to the ground, not quite. Backhand, bottom hand, right in this position, pushes down and just opens up and switches grip. But my left arm, I mean, right elbow has to come up to clear the head. And then I just throw my heel out and there would be a head in between here. Okay, reset. Now I'm gonna go to my right. So tension, left pin, right float. Strike, back leg comes up, I'm in the web, towards the face, capture the arm, twist. Bottom hand, left hand in this case, pushes, comes, switches the grip, elbow comes up, and my heel turns to get that arm straight down and wrapped around their neck. And obviously, there's no cantaloupe there for, for me to, to actually squeeze. So visualization that I harp on so much is the key. All right. Let me look. Is that good with everybody? Thumbs up or X? We're looking good. All right. <clears throat> wow. It's 10 till already. Time flies when you're having fun. All right. So tension. Pin right. Float left. Strike. Back leg, right pinky up, face, pin, rotate in, back hand pushes, rotates, comes up, twist your body. And you can do that with a combination of back heel out, hourglass, it's going to depend on how your bad guy lands. All right, going to the right. Tension, left pin, right float, release. Back hand push, left pinky up, towards the face, wrap around. Back hand switches, capture, and I did hourglass. Don't forget that elbow has to kind of get out of the way of the head. Reset. Tension, right pin, left float, strike, pinky up, back leg, towards the collarbone, drop, twist, out and around with a hand change, twist, reset. Tension, left pin, right float, strike, Pinky up, push, face, capture, twist, backhand push, hand change, elbow up, capture. Ready. Tension. Right pin, left float, release, back up. Around, out, push down, and change. Wrap the neck, hourglass. Switch, reset, tension. Left pin, right float, strike. Back up, towards the face, capture, rotate. Push down, change hand. Hourglass. Reset. So why aren't your hands changing the same? Why aren't both hands changing? One time you're back this way. Uh, hold on, I gotta get close enough. <laughs> Who's talking? Is it Steve? One time you're, yeah. One time you're thumb down. 
time you're this way. Okay, I'll have to, like, there's several versions of this, and uh, I, I am apparently uh, mixing them and didn't notice. So uh, I will try to. I, I agree with Steve. That's, that's correct, Steve. Good eyes. I will try to see what, uh, when and where I'm doing it. All right. Uh, and is that, is that the very end, Steve, when I do the neck wrap? Is that at the very end, Steve? Thumbs up or? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So I, if I was a betting man, I'm betting I'm doing it one way on the left and one way, a different way on the right. We'll see. All right. Tension, pin in right, float left, release, up, wrap, drop, rotate. Switch your hand, capture. So both thumbs are pointing away from the center of the stick on that version. Let's see what I do when I go to the right side. All right, tension, pin left, float right, release, push up, face, drop. Both thumbs are pointing up, okay. Hand change, around, both thumbs. So this time I did the same thing because I was thinking about it. So I'll have to, uh, I'll review the video and try to see uh, when this is over, maybe tomorrow, I'll review the video and try to see what I did. I'm not Elite, sure. It, it, when when your, your top hand on the first side is going in and under your armpit towards your center, on the second side, your, your arm is going away from your center line and setting the lock. So one's going uh, in and setting it and one's going away from your center line to set it. Okay, so I'm going here. That's, so going, the, that's, the, that's the original way you're doing it on the other side. So now they, that technique right there matches the other side. Yes. Uh, okay, so without a head, I'm guessing I shorted it and I went that way, is that what I was doing? Uh, yes. I was going, well, that, that's I, what you're doing on the other side. That's th that matches where where before, on the first side you go inward under the arm, and then on the on the other side you're going outward and setting the lock. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not visualizing very well my opponent's head. Is basically what's occurring. <laughs> All right. We have established that. I'm teaching you how to visualize, and I am not doing it very well. <laughs> All right. All right. So maybe I should concentrate a little bit more. All right. We're going we're gonna to go to the left. So tension, pin, and float. Out. Come up. Neck, and drop. Change your hand. Now. I should be going around the head and up. So the head should be facing this way. So I've got to kind of get around it. And I'm probably going to have to drop my body a little bit to do that. Okay, so that makes this one for me, if I'm looking down counterclockwise. All right, so now we're going to go this way. Pin. Float, tension, release. Come up, towards the face, drop. So I'm gonna go around the head. So now this time I've gotta go clockwise and drop down. All right, did that visualization work? All right, my apologies. The, the, guy, the guy who punched right 
had a big head. The guy who punched left had a, a, a real slender pencil neck. That, that's my excuse, and that's what I'm. Uh, it seems legit. Seems legit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's Makes not, sense let's not think about four, four of these. Let's knock out four more of these, and then it'll be uh, nine o'clock my time and ten o'clock everybody else's time. Uh, Steve, Ivan, and Alex. All right, so four more. Tension, pin right, float left, out. Come up towards the face, drop. Out around the head, counterclockwise, and capture. Reset. Tension, pin left, float right, strike. Up, face, capture, rotate, or twist. Push down, change hands around the head. So that one was clockwise for me. Two more, reset, tension. Pin right, float left, release. Up, face or neck, drop, twist. Push down. Hand change counterclockwise, capture, and reset. Last one, going right, tension, pin left, float right, release, back leg up, towards the collarbone or face, drop, elbow in, push down, switch that hand, come up, that one was clockwise for me, I'm around the neck. All right. So it is right at nine o'clock, gentlemen. Any questions? I wish I had a kid to work on. That was a lot of new stuff for me. Not a question. Yeah. Uh, three of you I know hadn't had Tonbo at all, so. It was really good, man. Was really Actually, good. And, and Jerry, I don't know if Jerry, Jerry, you guys said you didn't do a lot of Kobu though previously, well, we, so I don't know. We do, uh, we do modern Arnis, so it's so another Filipino stick style. So you've at least swung a stick a couple of times. Uh, yeah, now it's, uh, been, yeah, been on the receiving end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Alex is sequestered with his family, so he now has a new key. Uh, which is not fair to the rest of the class. <laughs> okay, so so if I can add just a, a means to um, remember how to bring that loop, just because I got somebody choked out right now. <laughs> cool. So same here. So I went to my left side. One, two. And I palm changed the bottom hand. Whatever hand I use to palm change, I'm going to circle from that shoulder over to the other shoulder. So in this case, it would be my counterclockwise, where I can come around the head and set the lock. So if I go from the other side here, boom, which is my, my right side, his left punch, same footwork, everything the same. Now I palm change the bottom hand and I go from my left shoulder over to my right shoulder and I set the lock right there. So when you guys palm change the bottom hand, bring it from your right shoulder over to the left, or when you palm change the left hand, palm change, and then bring it from your left shoulder to your right. And that sets up the, the choke perfectly. Yeah, do it one more time real quick, Alex. Do it one more time, and you see, you'll see that he can only go clockwise or counterclockwise. The direction he goes, he has to do that to get past the opponent's hand to get around to the neck. So do it one That's more time. Right. So watch again. So he punch out. So I go one, mm -hmm. steps up, I push across, roll up the web of the hand. There's my first lock. And then from there, bottom hand palm changes. And look, it's right there, perfect. Mm -hmm. And so he couldn't get around his hand if he did it the way that I did it one or two times there when I was not yeah. visualizing uh, my imaginary friend had no hands. 
it was Luke Skywalker after Vader chopped his hand off, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, son. All Thanks, right, man. I'm sorry it's dark. I, next time I, I get I get on here, uh, I'll I'll definitely be better set up. And and if I may just say real quick, Lee, this is fantastic. I hate that I missed a lot of classes, but I'm here, man. As long as uh, I'm able to, this is really, 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 thank you, man. Thank you so much. You know, it's kind of interesting. This format seems like it would be awkward, but I, I must admit I've learned quite a bit of new stuff uh, since we started using Zoom. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, I guess because it forces Lee to have to show things that uh, we don't, we would normally not be doing in class. All right. Any other uh, questions or comments? No, I'll just echo what Alex said. This is great. Thanks a lot for having me. Appreciate it. No problem. Where do I send um, you money, man? I want to send you money. <laughs> just give me a link, man. I want. I'm, I want to. I'm. I'm a. I'm a student. I want to be a student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you have never paid me anything. That's a house rule that I picked up from Waddell. Uh, she Hyundai concepts. Awesome. I'm yeah. So, uh, we're yes. talking about beyond die once a month doing the same thing, uh, for all the Udantia around the world. Um, uh, Alex and Ivan, Alex already sent me his Ivan. If you shoot me an email, uh, or just a, a text message that tells me which email you use for Zoom. I will send you the, the Wednesday and Saturday links for the, the Zoom account. Uh, actually, the Wednesdays you both already got. It's the same Wednesdays. It's a different username or whatever on Saturdays, but you're more than welcome to join anytime. How do you cool. feel about me sharing that with uh, Leah and, and a couple of my, my Black Belt candidates? Yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. If uh, the more the merrier, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I, I assume we're probably only going to be doing this two and a half, three more weeks. After that, uh, if you didn't read my post today, if the city starts letting us back in the dojo, we're probably going to be in the dojo and I'm just going to have this camera running in the corner. You can still log in, but it's not going to be quite the same. I'm going to be you know, one student's going to be doing Nahashi Shodan, one's going to be doing Seisan, one's going to be doing Kusan Ku or whatever. Uh, and, of course, I won't have all the fancy lighting, uh, which for the most part you guys can't see. But, uh, but I definitely, the Xi'an Dai once a month, I, I think this kind of stuff uh, is definitely worthy of trying to get somewhat of the band back together, uh, if not Yoko Ono. You know. <laughs> All right. Any awesome, other man. any final words, questions, comments? No, thanks a lot, Lee. All right. Thank Great you, seeing you guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Right. Thank you so much. Guys. Good to see some of you.